Hello and welcome back you lovely YouTube people. I just finished installing the heater in my van and I've done all the interior as much as I want to. And now I can finally get on with some more content for you guys. So in this episode, I'm going to go through rebuilding the carburetors on my 64 standard. Uh, they are Cadron Solex 40 millimeters, I think. So I'll go through um, rebuilding them. I ordered a couple of kits. They're actually here. They arrived yesterday from Peruzzi. But get this, this little lot here was 190 euros. These, I really needed these diaphragms for the uh, fuel pump. I think that is, or was causing a lot of the problem, if not all of it. But these were 65 euros a packet, just for a bunch of gaskets, a diaphragm and a valve, a couple of washers. But it's not just Peruzzi that are selling them expensive. Everywhere is a similar price, so, yeah, I had no choice. If I want to fix my car, I had to buy them. So obviously I'm running two carbs for two packets. I also bought this um, pulley uh, just because I don't have any timing marks on the one I have on the car. So I bought this just so I can see accurately the timing and that everything is set up. Actually, I'll go and show you the heater in the van. It's a bit rainy and windy out here but you know i'll survive so here we go i left it out here because it was a bit smoky when it started up but the exhaust comes out there it's pumping away and i neatly put the controller here and then you have the duct coming in here so when you're camping uh, this bed slides out here to a double bed and uh, for now I've just got the duct. Man, it's really hot in here. Just poking out the side here because on the cold winter mornings that are coming, um, that, will, that will be nice to warm up the cab and defrost the windows and everything. So tomorrow I'm gonna do a full test on it and leave it running all day while I'm at work. Just make sure everything's running okay. But oh, let's get on with the carburetor, shall we? So here we are. Twin carbs. This one is on there still. The other one I've taken off and let's go through a rebuild. Okay, let's get started. It's actually the next day now because I got a little bit tired yesterday. So let's crack on. So uh, as I said yesterday, I already removed this side and we need to remove this side, obviously. So this engine I built last year, it's a 1641 twin carbs and everything's balanced and everything is brand new. New heads, new crank. Uh, the, only other, the only thing that I used from the old engine was the cam. Um, but yeah, and the fuel pump. But every, everything else is pretty much brand new internally anyway. So we need to get this off. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm using a CSP uh, linkage so there is actually a little clip normally that you have to just pick off like that and pull it out but I haven't got them on there at the moment because I've been adjusting things and um, so they're not in it so you basically just pop that off and then you undo the fuel line and then you remove these two nuts and then the whole thing comes off and obviously remove your air cleaner, otherwise you won't be able to get it out. These are quite tricky to get off because there isn't really any room to get a socket in there. You can only just get a spanner on there. I actually found that it was easier to remove the entire top of the carb, especially if you're rebuilding it because then you don't need to reuse the gasket or anything. So you can undo the six screws on the top, take the top of the carb off, and then that gives you access to these two um, nuts. And they're actually bolts that go through there and squash.
So that's just a 13 millimeter with a washer. This is in three parts. You should lower the lid for this, excuse me. And then there's a cork seal. Looks like it's seen better days. And then you remove the fuel hose. Maybe a little drip, there we go. Okay, so like I said, you can either remove these six screws, take the whole top off, or you can get to these. So I should, I think I'll make, you can either get these bent spanners that you can buy, um, but I don't have a set of those. This one, this one is actually really easy to get to, but I'll just demonstrate. Um, so if you can't get the spanner on there, you can put it up on its end like this and get it located. This is a 14 millimeter, by the way. So you can get it located like that. And then you can get another spanner, put it like this, and then you can use it as a lever like that. So that's what I did on the other side. I'm actually gonna do it this way now. Okay, very important is not to drop anything down there. And I don't think I need to tell you why. Okay, so now you're ready to remove this carburetor. So just give it a little wheel. So you have to be careful because obviously the float bowl is full of fuel. So you wanna lift it out quite straight because um, otherwise it's gonna leak everywhere. So I should be able to just pull it through there like that. Voila! Okay, so we moved over to the table. And the first thing I'm gonna do is drain the fuel out. So basically I've got a container and I'm just gonna turn the carb upside down and you can see where it comes out of. Or maybe you can't, but it comes out a hole. Okay, so that's the float bowl emptied. Now I'll just put it on a piece of wood because we have the accelerator linkage there, so it sits upright on a on a piece of wood like that. Okay. So okay, so first off, get a 14 millimeter spanner. You don't necessarily have to do things in this order, it's just that I am. So inside here, there's a filter, because you obviously have the fuel coming in here, and then it passes through a filter. It's always good practice to put everything you take out in a little tub. So gently remove the filter. Doesn't look too bad, but we'll give that a clean. Just knock off the washer there and then we can take off these six screws on the top here so because this is made from aluminium nothing should be overly tight because you don't want to strip out the threads and if you do that you're in a whole lot of poo I don't actually know much about these carbs. These were basically on my 54 Beetle that you may or may not have seen in a previous video. There's actually in England, it's the first Beetle I ever bought 
and it was completely modified when I bought it and it had a 1641 engine in and it had these carbs on it so I have actually opened these carbs or one at least um, to clean it just a quick clean when I built the engine that's in this 64 um, but I've never done a full real rebuild so there we are I don't know if you can see with my hand in the way so the top piece should separate there we go easy so there we have so there you have a one-way valve for the fuel the new kit comes with one but this is actually original Solex one so I'll check that it works and I'll clean it and keep it there isn't much to the top piece except for that so let's put that to one side so then on top of here you have one gasket and you have to note obviously the orientation is quite hard to get it wrong really so we'll use a new one I actually made these ones last time when I opened it up so on this side you have your reservoir where the fuel comes in and then this fills up and then this float comes up like this and when it gets to the top it touches this valve here and stops the flow of fuel into it so this has a little plastic bit there like a retainer thing and then this is a brass with a pin and you should always check and shake these to see if there's any fuel inside because if this leaks it obviously won't float to where it should do to turn the valve off uh, I think the new ones are usually plastic now so yep that sounds fine so then you check in the bottom of the float bowl and there's usually that's where most of the dirt collects if you haven't got a filter or anything and then on here we have the accelerator pump so when you put your foot on the throttle this rotates the fuel comes through the um, hose here pipe sprays fuel into the engine and this has a diaphragm inside which pumps that fuel through so those diaphragms are made of like a I guess it's like a nylon um, diaphragm and over time they obviously degrade okay so next up I'll just drain this little bit of fuel out so inside here we have a jet you just put a screwdriver on there take that out and then we'll clean that make sure it's not blocked and then on this side we have another jet and we can remove and clean They quite easily can get blocked up okay so the next thing I'll just get some pliers to take this off okay be quite gentle with these because they're quite delicate but you just grip it give it a little wiggle and it should come out like that so we're going to give that blow and a clean out now this is where you have to be really careful because where I just took that out there's a tiny ball bearing inside there that acts as a, a ball valve so you need to turn this upside down there it goes see how easy that is to lose I don't know if you can see that on the camera but it's tiny so that could ruin your day and looking at parts and everything I don't even know where I mean you can obviously get ball bearings from anywhere but to get the right size and everything if you've lost it 
is another thing. So that comes out. So the next thing we're going to do is take this diaphragm out. So it's pretty simple. So this is just a basic tear down, clean and put back together again. I'm not a carburetor expert. This is just to make sure there's nothing blocked. There we go. So inside we have a spring and then we have the diaphragm. So you can see it's like a nylon or something. So if obviously this splits, it won't pump. And this doesn't look like it's split, but they obviously get baggy and don't, they're not so efficient. And you can see that this is actually coming apart. So 65 euros each, that's what I'm paying for. And then if you look inside, actually, we have some crap in there, look. So, this is definitely not a waste of time. Hello everyone, sorry to interrupt, but I noticed the other day when I was editing the video for this carburetor rebuild that one of the clips didn't record, so obviously I didn't push the button. So I'll just quickly whip the top off one of the carbs and show you the bit that's missing. And basically the rebuild is just the reverse of taking it apart, so I'm pretty sure you'll pick up. So I'll just whip it off and tell you the bits I missed out. Let's do it. And here's Dusty Boy, by the way. Say hi, he's joining me in the workshop today. All right, so I just whipped the top off, taking that back off. And the bits that I missed out is that um, I actually have this thread I welded, crudely welded, two long M4 uh, bolts together, just to make it longer. And then if you look inside here, um, that threads inside there, like that. And then I just used, you can either use like a lever or, or I use this slide hammer. This is actually from uh, one of those kits where you can remove dents by gluing the bits on. But I just put that on there and slide it gently and what that does is it pops out that little brass uh, insert and underneath there is like this top hat uh, black plastic piece um, but you'll see that in the uh, rebuild um, part of the video so the other bit i had missed out is that i replaced uh, these two gaskets here and all you need to do is there's two screws one there and one there and then that whole thing comes apart. Just cleaned it up, um, put these new two gaskets in. It's like sandwiched between this uh, white plastic piece. Um, but you'll see the reassembly. So I just wanted to add that. Also, um, I had removed this inner chamber piece. Um, so you'll see that again, like I say, in the reassembly. So. Okay, so I give a bit of a clean with a brake cleaner and a toothbrush. It's not perfectly clean, but everything is um, clear and not blocked and everything. So I use like a air gun and then I just blow through, make sure everything is clear like that. So um, let's put it back together, shall we? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is Put this back together so put the cleaned out the filter put that back in in our new kit it comes with a nylon washer that seems to kind of fit on here but not very well so i'm going to just go ahead and use the original one should be fine so we'll just put that back in there 14 millimeter spanner remember don't go crazy tight because it's aluminium and then we can test our valve. So what I'm gonna do, which is the nicest thing, is blow into the tube and then put my thumb on it to see if it stops the flow. Fuck. 
Yep, seems to work fine, okay? So that's all that really needs to be done for the top half. Uh, what should we do next then? Next I think we'll just pop this back in. So like I said, I've blown all the um, holes out and everything. So this comes in from the bottom. There's a little notch there that locates there. And then there's a screw in the side that holds it into place. Like that. And then we can put this top piece back in, which there's a spring there. I don't know if you can see. Oops, the other way around. Yeah, like that. So that locates in there and then just tighten this up. Like that. So I think the next thing we'll put the bottom half together. So in our kit we have two new gaskets. So we'll just take those bits out which I am they are identical. So this goes this way around. You can see there's that extra hole there that locates for here. So make sure you get these the right way around. Then we have our nylon spacer. Same thing, extra hole there and there. And then another gasket, like so. And then we get our two screws. We just drop them in there. And then, yeah, I'm just looking, there's a hole there that lines up with there. And then obviously this piece that lines up with these two. So that goes that way around. Like a nice sandwich. Line it up. Screw it down. Let me just check that that's in the right way. Remember to tighten these quite evenly and not too tight. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna put in is our new accelerator pump. So make sure that this is the right way round because when you put this back on, if this butterfly is flipped round the wrong way, you screw it down and then it won't work properly. And you don't wanna find that out when you've put it on the car and then it doesn't work. So the new kit doesn't actually come with a spring, which is a bit disappointing. So we'll use the original spring <clears throat> and then this flat side goes against the spring because that piece there actually gets moved by that rod there that comes out. So pretty simple. Like that and then you just squash it down. So there should be four screws. The six screws that hold the top half on are different to these. Let me line the holes of the diaphragm up and then you can start to screw them in. Again, not too tight. So the next thing, let's put this little fella. So you have this, I'm not sure if it's rubber or not. It feels quite hard, but that goes in with the skinny side down. So you just pop that down there like 
like that. And then this is the piece that I pulled out with the slide hammer. So let's get the special tool. Look at that craftsmanship. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so you put that in there and let's just give it a tap. Maybe with these. Not too hard. That's in place. And then we need to put the jet, which is this one, that goes down there. Okay, so this goes in there. Like that, and then a screwdriver. Like so. Right, now for that all important little ball. Come on. There it is. If you lose this, it can spoil your day. So that little fella goes in there. And then we get this pipe, which I need to blow out. Okay, so it's all nice and clear. So we pop that back in there. And all I do is I get the screwdriver and I just gently tap it home like that. Next thing, main jet. Okay, so if you can see, it has bigger holes on the side there, but a tiny little hole in there. So what I normally do is um, take a piece of wire from a wire brush, you know, a cleaning brush, and then poke it in there, make sure it's clean. But we actually have here at work these little cleaning rods for oxacetylene blow torches to clean your nozzles. So hopefully this one will fit perfectly. Look at that. Okay, so that's nice and clear. And then we get our compressed air. Blow it like that. So that can go back in the side, like so. And then with eight millimeter spanner, just nip that up. So the next thing is the float bowl. So we have the brass rod that goes through there. And then that fits there freely. Make sure it's free, it doesn't get stuck. And then you just have this little plastic retaining thing that goes on the top like that. Boom. Okay, we're getting somewhere, aren't we? So next up is this fella. So again, like the other gaskets, there's an orientation and you can see that there's this little cutout bit and that's for this hose here. So it should go like that way. So always important when you get these because these are not always the best quality aftermarket parts. Just lay it over there and make sure that all the holes do actually line up. Because I've had it before where they don't or they haven't punched the holes and then obviously the carb doesn't work as it should, but this one actually looks all right. So, yeah, that goes there. Let's get my bit of wood back, shall we? So that can sit there like that nicely. Okay, have I missed anything? It's always good to check what bolts you have left to make sure you haven't missed anything. And it looks like we're on the right track. So obviously make sure your surfaces are clean no scores or anything like that. And you don't have to put any sealant on these. And the valve goes on top of the float. So we just lower that down. Like so. And then we put these back in. And these two have a split washer on them. And then a bit like you would with a cylinder head or anything like that. 
just nip them up in a sequence not nip one up one after the other like I think you're I think you know what I mean Boom, done. So the only other thing that was in the kit is this gasket, which obviously goes here. So we're done, rebuilt. Obviously, like I said, it's not 100% um, best way to clean it. I would like to have put this in the um, ultrasonic cleaner, but yeah, I didn't. So hopefully it will work. So let's move over back to the car. Right, so. Pretty simple, new gasket, car back on in the right orientation. So we have the accelerator here. So we'll just throw that in there. Okay, so I just need to tighten them up and we're done. Get on with the other side. But I hope this was of some help because I couldn't find any or much information about these carbs when I had a look online. So I hope that this might help a few people. Um, so yes, more stuff coming soon. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything I've missed out or anything you would like me to elaborate more on and I'll try and answer all the comments and everything. So I'm really grateful once again. Thanks, cheers.